Hey guys, subscribe for daily content. And if you're shopping for gear, make sure you check out the description for the newest items at some of the very best online retailers. There's also links for some of the items that I personally recommend. Thanks. What's going on YouTube? Metal Complex here, and today I've got another interesting knife review slash knife overview to share with you guys. This is the Quantum Ursus NL by Shirogorov, uh, a less expensive version of the Shirogorov Quantum. Uh, we're going to talk all about it today. Uh, this was sent in to me by uh, at Jake's Cool Stuff or Jake's underscore Cool Stuff on Instagram, uh, Jake's Cool Stuff on YouTube. So make sure you subscribe and give him a follow. It's because of people like him that I'm able to bring you guys daily knife content. As is the case with all knives that are loaned to me on this channel, it will go back to him when I'm finished. Uh, thanks to my generous uh, patrons who are supporting me. There's a link for Patreon right down below. And please make sure to follow me on Instagram at metal underscore complex. Let's go ahead and get a measurement of this guy. I'm sure a lot of people are wondering what the heck is the difference between the Quantum Ursus NL and the Quantum and the Quantum Gen 2. I happen to have all of them here today and we're gonna talk all about it. Uh, by the way, if this is available, I will link it down below, but these are hard to get. Shirograph knives are not made in massive quantity. They are not Spyderco. Uh, they are much more expensive, much more small batch, more attention to detail, right? They're not for everybody, certainly, and they're very, very expensive, but People who are hunting them down for the first time just know it's very unlikely that it, you know your Shirograf acquisition experience is going to be a sort of point and click kind of thing. Not usually, uh, but I'll link it if I can. Um, overall length of the Quantum Ursus NL, still coming in at 8.75 inches overall with a f four, and we're in places it's four inches, right? If you go up here, it's 3.85. If you come down here, it's four and an eighth cutting edge is almost exactly four inches. Let's go ahead and do some size comparisons. First off, a comparison up against the Gen 1 Shirograph Quantum and the Gen 2 Shirograph Quantum. These are all production knives, none of them are custom. We have the more expensive variants here and here, and yes, there definitely are details uh, that make those knives more expensive. We're gonna talk about those. And then we have the Ursus and L, of course, in the middle. But you can see here that it's not shorter or anything like that. Dimensionally, it is different just a little bit, um, but uh, blade length and things like that, you know, body length, it's, it's about the same. Up against the um, Ontario Rat Model 1 and the Ontario Rat Model 2. So there you go. Definitely a big knife. Up against the Spyderco PM2 and the Spyderco Para 3. Whoops. Uh, yeah. And last but not least, the Benchmade Griptilian, or in this case, the Ritter Hogue, and the Benchmade Bugout. So, Shirogorov Quantum Ursus, definitely a large knife, but um, not all that big, like in terms of presence. Let's go ahead and do, oh, here, first, a look at the action. That's right. These are single row bearings. <laughs> We're still definitely falling shut. More on that soon. Um, thickness up against the Spyderco Para 3, it's actually almost exactly the same. Let's go ahead and take an opportunity to put it up against the original Quantum. You can see here the original Quantum is definitely thicker. And the Quantum Gen 2, which is now thinner. But I think the Ursus is still... Yeah, it is. It's ever so slightly thinner. So, more on that soon. Um, let's go ahead and, for, well, here's the thing. We can't do a hardware check. I mean, we can. I've, I've had this conversation with people. The only thing I don't like about the uh, Shirograph knives is they have uh, proprietary hardware. This is not proprietary hardware. Uh, I had a conversation with somebody here recently who was frustrated that they did not include the specific tool. Um, okay, but also, come on, this is uh, a coin, a flathead screwdriver, but if you don't want to mess up the pivot, you can take two credit cards, tape them together, or three credit cards, tape them together, and then sand down, cut, basically, in the shape of a uh, screwdriver, and then sand down the edges to get exactly the thickness that you want. You can do that. You can buy, I think, plastic flathead screwdrivers if you want to do it. It will turn it. It's pretty easy to create something 
that will turn the hardware and not damage it. The nice thing about the style of Shirogorov's hardware is it is unique, right? And well, I mean, there are other companies who copy this, but it looks nice. It looks a lot nicer than a simple flathead or a Phillips head or a Torx head, right? We usually see a Torx bit or a Torx pivot. It looks nicer, but it's also very easy to get at. Now, people will still argue this into the ground and the base, the foundation for this, whether people care to admit it or not, is that the tool exists and it is very expensive. So this ruffles people's feathers and generally speaking, you know, expensive knives invite, you know, <laughs> flame, uh, flamed comments. So yeah, I wouldn't get too hung up on that. Um, I personally, I purchased the tool once and I was like, what am I doing? I don't need this. And I sold it. So, um, anyways, uh, yeah, there is a Torx head back here. Um, this is a T8 for, uh, the lock bar insert screw. And then everything else is going to be, you know, your, um, makeshift credit card screwdriver or whatever you want to use to take it apart. Um, let's go ahead and measure the blade stock thickness. Get out my calipers. Um... Excuse me. There we go. I bet this is 130 thousandths or so. I think I read somewhere. Yeah, 130, it says 134. It's probably 135 thousandths, which definitely is thinner than the original Quantum. I want to say, here's mine, the Quantum Gen 1. Uh, this guy's probably 145 or so. Oh no, it's even thicker than that, 153. Um, and then let's do, just to compare, because I know people are going to want to know this. Uh, Shurgroff knives are confusing. It's, you're not alone. Um, and then the Quantum Gen 2 also coming in at 135,000. So there you go. Let's go ahead and weigh it. And we will, you know, also weigh it up against these other Shurgroff knives, these other Quantums. So weight on the Quantum... Uh, Ursus NL coming in at 4.34 ounces. Mm, yeah, 4.34 ounces. Weight on the Quantum Gen 1 coming in at 4.59 ounces. And weight on the Quantum Gen 2 coming in, uh, curiously, the lightest at 4.34 ounces. That's interesting because it has a backspacer. And are these actually... So I, po I pointed out that initially that I thought the quantum, yeah, it's weird. The quantum gen two is just ever so slightly thicker. That's so weird. And then, so this guy, um, oh, here's why. It's because there's no internal milling on the uh, quantum Ursus. Interesting. I would not have expected that. There definitely is on the uh, quantum gen two. So there you go. Um, and I think that's probably going to do it for uh, the initial information here. So let's talk about this knife for a little bit. Um, this, uh, if you're wondering, you know, if, if you're somebody who's handled a bunch of Shirogrovs already and you're wondering, like, does that even feel like a Shirogrov still? Or if you've never handled a Shirogrov and you're wondering, you know, as, you know, from someone uh, who has handled a lot of, of Shiros, does it, um, does it feel good, right? Um, the answer is, yeah, it, it definitely does feel like a Shiro Groff. There's just some noticeable differences in, um, you know, the, all the little details. Um, but things like action, definitely there. It's funny. <laughs> if there is a difference in the action, it's, I mean, yeah, like, <laughs> You can kind of feel a bit more of a buttery glide with the Quantums. Do them back to back. They're both incredibly smooth. It, it, it is so, if there is a difference, it is so minimal. As somebody who owns this one and paid way more money for this one, right? <laughs> what that usually does is it makes you try to justify, well, no, the action here is uh, noticeably different. So uh, I am justified in spending hundreds of dollars more. Uh, no, um, I got to be honest with you guys. The action on the Ursus NL here feels almost identical to the multi-row bearing action in the Quantum. It's very, 
very impressive. Something that does not feel quite as impressive is the flipper tab. Um, the flipper tab on the um, the uh, Quantum and Quantum uh, Gen 2, this, it's not nearly as pointy, especially in the Quantum Gen 2. Is that the case though? These both feel about the same, to be honest with you. It's much more of a comfortable flip. This guy, for whatever reason, feels a little, it feels a little pointy. Um, I don't know what it is. Maybe it's just a weird, it's just like that last little notch right there. I'm not sure why it's feeling a little bit more pointy, but I don't know. Um, but uh, yeah, really though, the action itself is fantastic and same kind of situation. You kind of have to get around that flipper tab, but there's still no, what I would call like a double, uh, double clutch or anything like that. Ergonomically, it feels really good. Honestly, it feels almost indistinguishable from the Quantum. The difference is, because the lines here are the same, the difference uh, is in the work that goes into the titanium. There are little things like we don't have the nice fuller on the blade. Uh, the finish on the blade of the Quantum and um, the uh, Quantum Gen 2, it's a, a, a more of a premium finish. You, you might actually prefer more of the scratchy tumbling that's on the Ursus. I mean, if you do, then hey, you know, you can count that as a win. But the finish on the blade here uh, and the blades themselves, uh, definitely, it's a bit more of a premium look. This is kind of a more plain Jane. Still looks good, right? But you can see here, we have more of a scratchy tumbling, which is fine. And then this is more of a sort of cloudy, almost like a vapor blasting. Uh, I, I think it's still a tumbling, but it, it does look almost like vapor blasting. And then that fuller, right, is just not present. They don't have to mill that out, right? Maybe you don't prefer the fuller. Um, and, you know, if you're going to use this, that's the idea, apparently, behind the, the Ursus, is that it's less of a showpiece. Like, you can still use the Quantum, for sure. Uh, and your, your experience is going to be, <laughs> like, the difference in your, exper your user experience is going to be almost trivial. But... Little things like removing the um, fuller allows them to get the cost down and you also don't have to worry about cleaning it out, right? Um, so yeah, uh, but other than that, I mean, the blade is still wonderful and extremely sharp. Um, nice puncture tip, right? Extremely functional. Another difference here is that the pivot itself is smaller. Okay, uh, it's smaller. <laughs> I don't, there's not really, it's, that doesn't really mean anything, right? Um, I also notice little things like the milling on the lock bar, which is present right here on the Quantum. Um, that, little details like that are just not present on the Ursus. And that's kind of, it's kind of everywhere. Like, we still get some nice details in here. Um, and you still have full details, as far as I can tell, on the pocket clip. But we just don't have some of these extra milling lines, right? Um, we, we just don't have some of that, some of the extra detail. You definitely don't have the backspacer, which is a huge, um, to me, this is a big, um, you know, people who really like the flashy sort of showing off the machine work or machine potential of Shiro Groff, this area, especially back here. Um, we don't have any of this on the Ursus. This is just open and they've sort of recessed a standoff into the back. Now, that definitely makes it easier to clean, um, which is another sort of friendly, you know, utilitarian thing. You could argue that the fact that it does not have milling pockets or weight reduction pockets on the inside also makes it a tad easier to clean um, because you're not going to have little gunk traps or anything in there. You just have, right, it's just like a flat titanium surface, which is fine. Um, something that bothers me, and I've seen this before, it's these three bars right here. And I'm sure that those are meant for integrity. Um, get rid of those and just add another standoff. Like this just looks weird. It makes me think of Hannibal Lecter's mask. Um, but okay, you know, uh, they're there and everything is nice and strong. The, the titanium certainly doesn't flex or anything like that. It's fine. I got to be honest. I don't, I'm not a huge fan of the wood. It's done super well in true Shirogara fashion. Uh, the inlay work is fine. It's slightly raised all the way around. Had they done this, why not carbon fiber or micarta or like the wood is weird. Um, some people like it, but uh, this would have been such, I would have been tempted to buy this if they had done just like a black micarta 
or something like that, like a black micarta inlay, like they like they do with some of the other NS or the less expensive stuff, right? If you, you've seen like the F3 NS, where it's just like a, it's it's not it's not nearly. Um, I'm sorry, that's that's not the NS, NL, uh, the F3 NL or whatever. They have different. They have so many different letters and things that mean different things. There's an F3 NS, which is this right here, and this is the more flashy production model, right? And then they have a less expensive version of this that doesn't have, you know, nearly the same level of detail. Um, but it's it's a, it's still a nice knife. And they do like micarta inlays, and they do, you know, instead of M390, they did L Max, right? Um, they they but they would do uh, like micarta inlays, and it still looked nice. I, I think that that would have been better if you like wood. Then there you go, right? This is more of a preference thing. I just think it would have appealed to a wider audience had they done something like, you know, black micarta or green or red or whatever instead of wood. But okay. Speaking of blade steel, this is Chromax PM. That was a brand new steel to me, but it's actually been around for a little bit. According to Shura Groff, it is very similar to LMAX. I don't have a ton of experience with it. Uh, I'm not gonna tell you guys that I took this knife out and put it through its paces. Apparently it's uh, Promax, Chromax PM is extremely similar to Bowler's LMAX, and I'm sure that it is a fine composition for a user variant of Shogro. I love LMAX. I think it's a fantastic composition, and we see them use that, you know, steel on, on their knives, so I, you know, I don't have a problem with that at all. The lanyard hole, which is uh, normally, you know, on the on the standard Shogro uh, Gen 1, and then the Quantum, I'm sorry, the Quantum Gen 1 and the Quantum Gen 2, it's back here. It's part of the backspacer, and it looks really good. It's just seamlessly integrated into the design. On this one, it's just a hole, which is understandable because, you know, it, it, this is how they did it, right? It's just, it's one of those things. You're going to have a hole in the front of the lander. But in my opinion, it looks pretty good. And I'm glad that they kept it off the pocket clip side because then they have to make room for it, right? So then they have to think, oh, where do we, how do we position the pocket clip? Which is something that no one should ever have to be concerned with when they're designing a knife. The pocket clip comes first. Position the pocket clip first. The lanyard hole comes second because very, very, very few people actually care or you care about or use the lanyard hole. Everybody's gonna use the pocket clip or almost everybody. So that was a good choice. That was a fantastic design choice there. The pocket clip is, like I said, as far as I can tell, it's exactly the same. It doesn't look like there's any less work going into the pocket clip or the relief cut, you know, between these two knives, which is cool because that the pocket clip and the whole pocket clip area give the quantum, you know, it, it gives it character. So I like it. Um, there is a steel lock bar insert doubling as the over travel stop. There is no blade play whatsoever. Absolutely no blade play whatsoever. Here's the stop pin right back here. Nice shouldering, right? Easy um, disengagements. It's it's extremely easy to disengage the um, quantum, but you still have that nice clicky. No difference in the detent or anything like that. We certainly don't have um, any uh, you know pivot lash or anything. Detent's great. Centering, it's just perfect. So yeah, there are differences for sure, but this is the this is the thing. Uh, for people looking to get into, it, I've heard this so often. I think I honestly think Shogaroff is smart to do this, and they it's not like this isn't the first time they've ever done it. Like they know it's like, hey, listen, we make some expensive knives, and there are people who are really interested in our knives, but are just not interested in paying you know eleven hundred or twelve hundred dollars, which is what the these other two quantums cost. The Quantum Gen 1 is an is an $1100 knife. The Quantum Gen 2 is a $1200 knife. But there's visibly more work that goes into them. It's aesthetic work. And in some situations it actually takes away from like if you want to argue like well, the fuller looks nice, but it actually, you know, creates a hindrance in performance because then it's a gunk trap and you got to clean it out. Okay. Technically, yeah. Um, well, they just removed it on this guy. There are milling lines that are nice to look at, but they don't serve any utilitarian purpose. They just don't, they're just not present on the Quantum Ursus. But there's still plenty of style. There's still plenty of fun. Like, 
the, the there are so many luxury elements in this, and uh, you know, yes, it, it is. Um, you know, in, in like. How much is this guy? That's what you guys are waiting for me to uh, say. This is a six hundred and twenty-five dollar knife. It is nearly half the cost of the Quantum Gen Two, and a little over half the cost of the Quantum Gen One. They dra they dramatically reduce the price on that. And that being said, the Quantum Ursus NL is easily one of the nicest knives in the six hundred dollar tear. Like oh, it's easily. This is really good. I hope they keep doing this. And, and honestly, this would have been a home run had they done, for me, had they done a different handle material. Um, I mean, or handle inlay. Because everything else is really good. I kind of wish that they would still mill it out on the inside. I'm not bummed out about lack of you know, micro details because the titanium still looks really good. There's still plenty of style and, you know, if you look close, there's still plenty of like Shirogorov complexity, right? Looking to see if the jimping, the jimping's not really any different other than just how far it extends. For some reason, it extends further um, on the uh, Quantum, uh, like the Gen 1. And that's, you can see here there's a slight difference in the blade shape because of how far this area comes out. And then the drop is a bit more dramatic to get it to taper out to the tip the same way. So this is just, it's a Shirogorov Quantum. It's just a little bit less fussy, a little bit less dramatic, and it doesn't have many of those enthusiast elements that Shirogorov collectors look for. Um, if you're looking to purchase a Shura Groff knife and go out and use it, <laughs> the the Ursus uh, NL is definitely, you know, it's just less fussy. It's just a little bit more like, hey, it's okay, you know, to to put scratches on me, right? I cost a lot less and I'm a, I'm a bit less pretty, you know? And that's just going to be the case. But for those uh, people hunting, you know, a Shura Groff and they're looking to maybe not cross into the custom division just yet, right? Like that's kind of where I'm at. Like I appreciate a lot of the details on the nicer, you know, Shirogorov, uh, the production models. I'm just not ready to fork over two and a half grand for a custom division yet, right? I'm sure that day will come. <laughs> uh, but for now, I I'm still kind of enjoying these, but my goodness, would I purchase and own an NL? And I mean, yeah, cause then I could, then I would feel a lot better about carrying it, right? Um, for, uh, I'm sorry, the Ursus, something from the Ursus line is what I was saying. Um, this is the box. It literally says Ursus line. Uh, the Shurgroff Quantum Ursus NL is a very recommendable knife, which does not happen much on this channel in this price range. Usually, I mean, yeah, it's still very expensive. So anybody who has never considered spending even half of the cost of this, like don't even, yeah, this, this review is not for you. I mean, this is, it's something where you want to sort of, if you're interested in like maybe at some point pursuing this, you definitely want to climb the ladder. You don't want to go from a $200 knife to a $600 knife. It's best to, you know, kind of climb that ladder and so that you slowly kind of notice the types of details you can expect um, in, in different territories and whether or not those are for you, whether or not you care about that stuff. But anybody who's used to purchasing knives in, I would say the five to $700 territory, um, this is really good and you'll be really happy with it. Um, I just, you might not like the wood. Everything else about this knife is, is great. I, I like it. And uh, these are made in Russia, by the way, still made in, in Russia. Um, but I think that's going to be it. I'm going to put this on my recommended knives playlist. It's definitely one of the most expensive knives that's on that playlist, but it, I think it deserves a spot. Uh, very, very good. Thanks again to Jake's underscore, uh, cool. I'm sorry. Jake's underscore cool stuff on Instagram and Jake's cool stuff on YouTube. Make sure you follow and subscribe. Make sure you follow me on Instagram at metal underscore complex. If you enjoyed this video, leave a like. If you'd like to check out my other content, I do of course have lots of videos of knives that are either expensive or inexpensive that I do or don't like, so check those out. And if you enjoy all my content, go ahead and click on that metal complex logo right there and subscribe because there's definitely more coming. Thanks again for watching everybody and have a great day.